It's time to return to a classic kind of scary video. It's not going to be anything complex or something you've never heard of. It's going to be primal, primitive. It's the scary sound of someone's voice. As you probably know from any good horror movie, the power of a scary voice can send chills up your spine. Even a single word can turn the most harmless situation into your worst nightmare. I've been looking around online and I found the best examples there is to offer of this. Seriously, I was glad I was in a room with other people when I listened to these voices. If you're alone, or if you're watching this at night before you go to bed, you have been warned. Maybe go and watch the Dumbest Tweets video right after this if you want to cheer yourself up. My name is Danny Berg, and this is the top 10 scary voices that will keep you up at night. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the weepy voice killer. Paul Michael Stefani was an American serial killer who was convicted on three counts of murder which all took place in the early 80s. Now, For the most part, his name might have been forgotten on the long list of serial killers were it not for one thing, his calls to the police. After some of his murders, he would call the police to report the attack. He would usually sound erratic, apologizing profusely for what he had done and begging the police to stop him in a sort of crying, whimpering, whiny, weepy voice. That's the context of the story. Now let's hear the voice. Don't talk, just listen. I'm sorry what I did to Compton. I couldn't help it. Don't know why I ever... Stefani was eventually caught and given 58 years for the three murders and three attempted murders. In 1997, while in prison, he was diagnosed with skin cancer and confessed to the murders. He died the following year. Moving on to number nine now, we have Kevin Cosgrove. That's the name of this businessman who was on the 105th floor of the South Tower during the attacks on the World Trade Center in 2001. Like many of the people who were trapped on the upper floors, Kevin called the emergency services. They they were recording every call, including Kevin's. An operator was taking down information from Kevin about the whereabouts of his group within the tower when, to the shock of the whole world, the tower collapsed. This is the chilling recording from Kevin's call of those final moments. We're looking at all, we're looking at financial center. Two three of us, two broken windows. Oh God! Next to number 8 now, we have the oldest voice. Did you know that the oldest recording we have of a human voice dates back to 1860? That's 159 years ago. That's before the light bulb was even invented. Back then, a man called Edouard Leon Scott recorded himself singing the French song Au Claire de la Lune. He recorded it using a phonautograph and it sounded very creepy. It's not because he's trying to be creepy, it's not because the song itself is especially creepy. I think it's the strange quality to it that makes it sound like it's sort of underwater and also the fact that it's just so so old. As far as we know there is no audio of a human voice that is older than this and here it is for you now. <laughs> Move on to number 7 now, we have Annalise Michelle. She was a German woman who was exercised by Catholic priests between 1975 and 1976. They believed that she was possessed by a demon. Eventually, after 67 exorcism sessions, one or two a week, Annalise died in her home from malnutrition and dehydration. Her parents and the two priests were found guilty of negligent homicide and sentenced to six months in jail. The Catholic Church admitted that Annalise was mentally ill and suffering from psychosis. Sadly, it's a story that has been repeated throughout history, but what makes this case so famous is that the audio from some of the exorcisms has been shared online. These are very disturbing. <laughs> It's not just shocking, it's also very tragic to hear. Annalise passed away at the age of 23. Her story was the inspiration for a number of movies, including The Exorcism of Emily Rose, Requiem, and Annalise The Exorcism Tapes. Moving on to number 6 now, we have Area 51. It wouldn't be a scary video if I didn't mention Area 51, the secret US military base, which conspiracy theorists say holds the remains of the crashed UFO at Roswell and perhaps even its galactic pilots. In 1997, the legend took a when a man called into the Art Bell talk show claiming to have worked in Area 51. He said that everything people said about Area 51 was 100% true. From the phone call, you can tell that he wanted to go into more detail, but he sounded terrified. He kept telling Art that 
they were going to find him, whoever they were. When he finally picks up the courage to share the details, the radio station's power just cuts out. When they manage to get things going again, the caller has mysteriously gone. Take a listen and see what you guys think of it. They want those major population centers wiped out so that the, the few that are left will be more easily controllable. I, I still get it. Moving on to number 5 now we have Jake Evans, that's the name of this teenager who in 2012 shot and killed his mother and sister in Texas. The 17 year old called police to report the murders and sounded eerily calm. People later speculated that it was almost as if he had cognitive dissonance. It was clearly not the voice of a person who was mentally sound. When police later interviewed Jake, he told them that he hated the feeling of killing people but that he had been planning on killing his mother and sister for a while because he felt like they were suffocating him. Okay, what's the emergency? Uh, I just killed my mom and my sister. What? I just killed my mom and my sister. You just killed your mother and your sister? How did you do that? Uh, I shot him with a uh, 22 revolver. Coming in at number 4 now, we have the creepy voicemail. This one comes from a YouTuber called Hellsinger85. He uploaded it to YouTube in 2009 with a description, a weird voicemail I got in the mail, supposedly part of my investigation into the weirdness going on in my hometown of Armory, Missouri. It may be real, or it may just be someone playing with me. You listen and decide for yourself. If anyone who hears this happens to know anything about it, please contact me at my email, hellsinger85 at yahoo.com or visit my website. They then put a little link to their website, which I went to, but it says the page has been frozen. Quite strange. That means all we've got to go on with this story is the audio recording itself. The recording starts off with a pretty normal message from AT&T, but if you skip forward, this is what you hear. There's been no further information on this case or even any videos from Helsinger for almost seven years on his channel. Moving on to number three now, we have the Night Stalker. Richard Ramirez was an American serial killer, rapist and burglar in the San Francisco area who committed at least 13 murders and over 50 rapes from 1974 to 1976. While his crimes are shocking enough in themselves, the story gets worse for those who want to know more. On at least one occasion, Ramirez left a voice recording on the answering machine of one of his victims. The recording speaks for itself. Fortunately, Ramirez was eventually caught and brought to justice. In 1989, he was convicted of all charges and sentenced to death. However, due to California's lengthy appeal process, Ramirez remained on death row for 23 years before dying from lymphoma in 2013. Moving on to number two now, we have Operation Wandering Soul. During the Vietnam War, the US was looking for ways to beat the Viet Cong, who were putting up a fierce resistance to America. The US military decided to use the Vietnamese culture against them. For many Vietnamese, they believe that if a person dies, they must be buried in their homeland. If they are not buried properly, their soul may wander through hell for eternity. The Americans made fake recordings of Vietnamese voices pretending to be dead soldiers who were trapped in hell after dying on a battlefield and not being buried properly. They then played these voices over the battlefield in the hopes that the soldiers would put down their weapons and cease all fighting. Whether or not it worked is anyone's guess, but the voices remain terrifying to this day. And finally at number one now we have the Castrato. Alessandro Moreschi was born in modern day Italy in 1858. He was castrated as a small child in a treatment for a hernia, a treatment that is soundly rejected in modern medicine. With the loss of his testicles, Alessandro never reached sexual maturity and his voice remained unusually high as an adult. He eventually became a Castrato, a classical male singer usually used for religious choirs. The practice of castration was banned 
by the end of that century. As such, there are very few recordings of Castrato singing. One recording of Alessandro survived though. It's of him singing Ave Maria. Some people describe it as hauntingly beautiful, others just leave out the beautiful part. Well, that was intense. Can we do a more light-hearted one next time, please? Come on. Any suggestions? I could do a funny one. Sometimes I think we should all take a break from the scary. What do you guys think though? Thanks for watching, as always, guys. My name is Danny Burke, and I will see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.